there was once a young man who looked a lot like you, and his name was Jeffrey. And young Jeffrey was stumbling into the gym one day, finally about to achieve his New Year's resolution. And he started to feel insecure when he looked at the other guys in the gym. One by one, Chad, Tyrone, Hamza. <laughs> he looked at the men who were making him feel insecure. And because of the kind of content that Jeffrey was watching on YouTube, he felt horrible. You know why? Because he was looking at these men and he spotted that they all had high signs of testosterone. Chad had a warrior skull shape. Hamza had a thick neck. <laughs> and Tyrone had a massive... <laughs> Overthinking about testosterone and genetics. Jeffrey genuinely felt horrible. And this is the reality for so many young men when they start to discover content about testosterone and they realize they've probably got low levels. Adonis. Adonis isn't quite like these men. For Adonis has done what it took to elevate his levels beyond numbers that we can even comprehend. Adonis's testosterone levels are... <laughs> we don't even have numbers that high. Uh, but this didn't turn him into an asshole, a jock, a bully. No, Adonis used his testosterone for something so much better to protect and so when the barbarians were at the gates and the hard times had begun Adonis was ready to protect his loved ones I spoke a lot about testosterone on my channel today we're going to dive deeper into the effects of your diet on testosterone and there's something that you can do which is going to be kind of embarrassing for me you can go and find an old video of mine if you go onto my channel and go into the videos and choose the option where you can see like the oldest videos first it's one of the oldest videos literally like one of the videos i posted to my channel before i became a youtuber before i was ever bestowed a bathrobe where i'm sat there and i literally say what my diet is. I had bad mental health when I recorded that video and I'm sat there, I'm high as I record the video, by the way, I was literally smoking weed just before recording it. And I sit there and I say to the camera that I can out train a bad diet, that I've ate McDonald's almost every day that week, that I've binge ate snacks, junk food and sugar almost every day that week and it doesn't matter because I'm not fat. What I didn't really know about at the time was the effect that that poor junk food was having. And so a normal day for me was waking up early, going to the gym. So this is all in like 2019, going to the gym nice and early and then going to work or whatever I was doing, trying to be an entrepreneur. And it was the moment that it would turn around 7 p.m. That's when I'd start smoking with the girl that I was dating and, and we were living together. And we already knew what the ritual was. At 7 p.m. we start smoking. I smoke from the crack pipe. I'm not even taking the piss. I smoke from a crack pipe. <laughs> and, you know, get hungry. We order food from Deliveroo, from like, you know, the nearby restaurants, which are definitely using seed oils and putting other weird shit in their food. Got burgers and fries and a milkshake on the way right now. And then also starting to root through all the, the drawers that we've got, you know, like, okay, what's in here? What's in the cupboard and this? And it's, Going through, you know, the, the best, newest snacks. There's like a little cake that we got from like the shop today. So I'll eat that. And then after this, when the best snacks are gone and, you know, the food that we've ordered is gone, I'm still like a locust, just hungry, just binge eating. 
And now I'm at like this, the point, the sad point where I'm rooting through like the back of the cupboard snacks. You know, the ones that have been left in there for the last like while. The, the dead ones that aren't even worth the calories. Well, bro, I'll have them anyway. Feeling horrible about myself. I wanted to get lean and have a six pack. And here I am like not fat because of the fact that I train so hard. But I don't really look athletic. Sure, I've got a little bit of muscle here and I look, you know, kind of muscular. I fit like a t-shirt kind of nicely, but I felt bad. I would wake up feeling tired. Think about that. You, you wake up from sleep, which is supposed to be like the rejuvenating habit. Tired. I would go to the gym in the morning and most of my workouts would be just kind of tiring ones where I'd be sat there just scrolling on my phone pretending it was a rest break, but actually seven minutes would go by. Oh yeah, but a longer rest is actually better for recovery. Brain fog as I'm eating like my normal meals through the day, which is, you know, you know going to McDonald's with a friend or something just because it's kind of cheap and you can get the little Big Mac and fries for one ninety nine with the, the bus voucher. Do you think I was actually succeeding as like this entrepreneur who wanted to be productive and have like a like a good brain? I made barely any real progress to my goals for this entire year, which as a young man, you know how painful that is when an entire year of your life just just goes and you're not even closer to the point that you wanted to get to. More snacks, more snacks, more snacks. COVID starts, we're in lockdown and we're literally just binge eating at home, smoking and everything. Stress, sleepless nights, and you know, this was related to COVID and I worked in a homeless shelter at this point. And so I was helping this homeless guy and everything. So that was very stressful. Poor food, poor food, poor food. Testosterone must have been so tanked. Now I'm sleepless, I'm stressed, I'm still eating shit food, sugar. At this point, we start like drinking wine and stuff. And if I'm gonna be honest to you, I'm 21 years old at this point. I should be fit and healthy. I should have, you know, high testosterone. Quite frequently, my dick didn't work. Very often when it was time to like have sex, it was like, it was always a little bit of a struggle. And that was definitely not just because of testosterone. I think it was hugely because of my own mental health as well. And you know, if you're overthinking when you're about to have sex, that's definitely not gonna help. But I was eating the kind of diet which was literally making my pee pee softer. Imagine that as a young man. And then I actually changed my life. You might know this story by now, but in 2020, in May, I moved back home. I split up with her. I moved back home and I went full on, like just monk mode total focus while all the like the normal Jeffreys around the world were just wasting the opportunity of the COVID lockdown and they were just literally just like just sat at home coping and watching shit and um, playing video games and everything. I played zero seconds of video games. I watched zero movies. I watched zero seconds of any TV show. I came back home and I improved my life ruthlessly to a level that's impressed millions. No distractions. I set big goals and in three years, this is where we've got to. I don't even need to boast and like tell you the success that I've got. You can look at it yourself and you can go find the times where I've spoke about how much money I make. You know, a big part of this was my diet. I promise you, like, you can overlook your diet. You know, if you've just thought about your diet, oh yeah, how many grams of protein per pound of body weight for, for bodybuilding? Trust me when I say, if you have the right kind of diet, which I'm gonna walk you through my exact diet and also how I buy the food, which isn't poisoned by like, you know, normal shit where they put pesticides and hormones and plastics and everything. I'm gonna to walk you through everything in this video because I genuinely believe your diet unlocks your best self. Your diet unlocks your real productivity. You wanna know the best productivity hack out there? 
Is it using a notion page? Is it the, the forest timer where you plant the tree or is it the Pomodoro technique? It's none of those things. It's none of those things. The best way for you to become more productive is intermittent fasting. People don't speak about this stuff as like as much as they should do. The best productivity hack out there to have ever existed is all about your diet and the way that you eat. You would be a fool to not put this at the forefront of your mind and to eat an optimized diet for your work and for your testosterone. Luckily, those two things merge together very well. Work, like your brain power, <clears throat> and testosterone being boosted by the food that you eat. And so, May 2020, I come back home, and you know what? I didn't follow the normal advice of everyone else. I moved back home in an environment where from that day to this day, we've had snacks in the house. You see, I didn't follow the same advice as all those like pussy like articles and books where which they say like, you know, systems over diet, like just don't buy the junk food and it's easier, huh? Just throw away the junk food. I never threw away the junk food because my family eats it. So all day, every day for the last three years, there's been junk food in the house. There's been chocolates. There's been the kind of things that I used to binge eat on, but I discovered a way to not eat that, to have the willpower to not eat it. And everyone else in the self-improvement space, because they're all pussies, they told me that willpower is overrated and you should just use the, the nice environment. I tried that. The problem with throwing away the junk food and, and you know, like not buying it at the grocery store is that eventually you will be faced with your addiction and you haven't learned how to overcome it. So the fat person, the fat little idiot who throws away the junk food in this righteous, brave moment of, yeah, you know, I'm going to quit eating junk food. He'll go to work and his co-workers will offer him something and he'll eat it again. And this has happened to you, hasn't it? So I never did that. I've had junk food, my addictions around me all the time. And it's because I used willpower and everyone told me willpower is overrated. Don't just use willpower for your diets, you know, because the research says like that your willpower gets drained. This is what all the little skinny neck, skinny wrist pussies used to tell me but you but you know Hamza you're telling people to just use your willpower that's actually stupid because the, there was one study that showed that willpower gets drained when you use it yes I know that's like saying, oh, but don't go to the gym and bench press because then your chest will get sore and, and, and it'll get more tired afterwards. Yes. That's how we train something, you dumbass. Imagine if you didn't go to the gym because it would drain your energy and your muscles. That's the thinking of what everyone else on self-improvement, pussies. Telling you to just, you know, just don't buy it at the, the grocery store. Just throw away all the junk food in your house. Shut up. No, do the opposite. Grab the junk food that you've been addicted to and put it in front of you. Put it in front of you. Put it on your desk. Put it on your desk. If you're not a pussy, try this. Listen, here's your first actionable step of this video. Put it in front of you. Go and find the ultimate thing that you usually binge eat on. Let's say it's a cer certain chocolate bar. Get it. Put it on your desk. And stare at it like a psychopath. And ask yourself those questions when they arise. Why have I been ruining my life because of this? What am I feeling right now? Why am I coping right now, pretending that this experiment that Hamza's told me to do is over and I may as well eat it because I don't want to waste it? See how long you can go? Because it's not hard to have that thing that you used to be addicted to in front of you for months. I've had my favorite chocolate bar. I don't even do it anymore, but I had it literally like my, like my OG fans know that this is the truth. I had my favorite chocolate bar on my desk for months and months and months, constantly training my willpower. Yeah, sure, your willpower drains, just like your chest gets sore after training it, sure, but then it comes back even stronger once you rest. Stare at it like a psychopath. This is your actionable step and you must do this within 24 hours. Go and get whatever it is.
if it's something that can be left on your desk, obviously if it's like a slice of pizza, you probably don't want that like just open on your desk. But if it's like something that can be in a packet, sweets, chocolates, crisps, get something that you usually cope with, put it in front of your desk and just leave it there for months and just look at it and just think to yourself, you don't have power over me anymore. Try, if you're not a pussy, try it. Or you can keep trying what you've been trying and it hasn't worked, just not buying it at the grocery store. But then another, like your friend offers you it and you end up eating it because you need to have this in front of you to say no to it. You need to learn the skill of saying no when it's in front of you, not just hiding away, like closing your eyes like a little baby. Goo goo ga goo. <laughs> And so from that point, I had the symptoms of very high testosterone. I'm talking that I was working all day, every day. I became more competitive than I had ever had in my life. And by the way, I was a pussy for all my life, right? I was effectively just raised by my mother. My dad was always working and stuff. And my mom's obviously not like a competitive person or anything. I was a pussy for all of my life. I had no male aggression inside of me. I was such a soft, sensitive, little timid kid who was partially getting bullied by others and you know, people were being racist to me and stuff in sports class in, in high school. I often wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't even bring in like my sports, like my PE clothes. And I just like kind of sit at the side with the other fat kids. I wasn't like fat, fat, but I was kind of like chubby. Never been competitive, never cared about it. And suddenly when I started to eat the foods that we're gonna discuss, my dick's getting hard. I'm actually competitive. I'm seeing people who've got YouTube channels similar to mine or even bigger than mine at that time. And I'm thinking to myself some dark thoughts of like, I'm going to take what they've got. I'm going to take the attention away from them and siphon it for myself so that it benefits me and they don't get it anymore. And again, if you were, were like an OG fan of mine and you know the kind of videos I used to make back then, bro, I thought some competitive thoughts when it came about taking women from other men. Eventually, after two years of this, I got my testosterone levels checked finally. And I was above the high range. My free, my total test was about 700 and something, like which was on like the higher end of inside of the range. But the most important metric for testosterone is actually the free testosterone. And that was actually literally off the chart. The chart is obviously made for beta male little Jeffries. And you know, like they say, the healthy range is between 200 to like 900 and something. And free test is somewhat equivalent to that. My free test was literally not even in the range. It was slightly outside of the upper range. And I had the symptoms of, of it as well, trust me when I say it. But it was actually almost negative because at this point when I was I got this test in Thailand, it felt, I don't know whether it was testosterone or, or maybe lack of self-control, but my, my horniness and desire for those kinds of things was so high that it was actually way more of a distraction, which, you know, a lot of men would probably like that kind of distraction. You'd probably like to be like such a man that you were distracted by like, how many erections you were getting through the day and how, how horny you were and how much you wanted to have sex. And you know, I actually ended up falling off the diet and the program that I was on around then. And I do believe my testosterone went down from that point. So I've experienced like the, the range of this and there's a certain moment I just wanna walk you through where in late 2022, I was moving around a lot. I moved, I was here. I came back from Thailand. I went to Scotland. And then my decision was that I was gonna go and live in London. I ended up going to London and staying in like a hotel and Airbnb and everything for a couple of months whilst I'm waiting for my apartment. And I'm eating the food there. And you know, like we haven't really set up like the kitchen or anything. So we're just kind of like taking food out, but it wasn't even unhealthy food. It was just from like the nearby um, little mini restaurants in Canary Wharf and stuff. So I'm just getting like stuff from there. There's like a pot of oats and everything just eating kind of like what normal people who are going to work would eat. Like, you know, these quick like lunch meals and shit. Just not feeling good. And suddenly there was one specific point when I look into the mirror in this hotel from the side. And honestly, I was seeing like my like bitch titty. I was seeing like bloated lower belly. My face looked bloated. 
if I can find the exact picture, I'll actually put it up on screen. If not, I'm not sure if I've ever released it. There's there's some people, like some of my fans have seen it when they come to meetups, I often speak, like show them the picture. And I just looked like, like disgusting. And most people would have saw me like that. I had thick arms and everything. I still had like a bit of a chest and everything. And most normal Jeffries would have saw it and be like, oh, what do you mean you look disgusting? You look good, but it's all relative, right? So uh, like to, to most people at that point, if you can imagine me looking like p slightly puffy and like, you know, looking a bit bloated, to most people that still look kind of nice. Like I, I've went to the gym for like 10 years straight, but it's all relative. I'm an athlete and you need to say this to yourself as well. You're an athlete. You're an athlete. So if you're fucking bloated all day, if you've got a bit of fucking little bitch titty fat, if you feel bloated and sickly and brain fog and your dick doesn't work as an athlete, you should be concerned because you're not, we don't set the standards of these normal people because they would look at you as a young guy who's in like a healthy body, body fat percentage and think that you're just healthy, but it's not good enough because you need to be going to these new standards where literally if I get bloated by something, I'm a little bit pissed off because that means that I've been so stupid to eat something that hasn't agreed with my body. At this point, I should know what foods are actually good for me or not. And you should be at the same point. You should literally know what foods are good for your testosterone, for your health, for your longevity, for your like your, your brain, your, your cognition. We don't have the, the standards of normal people anymore because you've seen what they're like. You've seen the shit that these people eat. The shit that I used to eat in high school, like, you know, my mom used to feed me like chicken nuggets, bro. That's child abuse. I got abused by my mom when she was making me chicken nuggets every day in high school. No wonder I got gyno as a, as a teenager, bro. What the fuck are they putting in the, the meat? <laughs> There's, I wrote down, there is an actionable step here. It's not actually about diet, but since you've clicked on this video and you're interested in testosterone, there is something which I'm quite like an enthusiast about now. It's one of, in my opinion, the easiest ways for you to get like a free testosterone boost. And that is to just simply not put your phone in your pocket. This is something I've said a lot these days and I really wanna like just emphasize this. I know this isn't about diets, but if you want like a free testosterone boost, like a quick one, don't keep your phone in your pocket. Your phone has certain kinds of radiation that will actually negatively impact your sperm and your testosterone. So the easy, like the, one of the easiest ways you can get like a free testosterone boost, literally never put your phone in your pocket, just hold it. And when you're in school, when you're in, you know, you're going for a walk, you're in the gym, just hold it and then put it somewhere. Like you can put it somewhere safe inside of your bag. Maybe you can have like, you know, if you're wearing like a jacket, you can put it in that pocket. Don't put it in the pocket, which literally is like a centimeter away from your balls because it's, you know, you might not believe that like your phone's Wi-Fi and, and 5G has like an effect, ill health effect, but more research is coming out to show that it actually does. I have a video on my channel, which is titled, the fertility crisis is worse than you thought. And you might want to go and watch that if you're interested. This is just a quick actionable step. It's something you can implement right now. You don't need to go out and buy anything or anything like that. Just never keep your phone in your pocket if you care about your testosterone. And also if you want to have kids in the future, which I'm sure like a lot of us do. <clears throat> One issue that I have, we don't eat like our ancestors. I think this is a major problem. And in fact, you know, I want to tell you a little story recently. I'm constantly looking at this stuff online, right? And I think this is why you might been, been able to like get like good value from my videos because more than being like a guy who makes these YouTube videos, I'm literally a guy who's on self-improvement, who like I spend all of my time just improving my life. I, I like, like it. Honestly, people think it's like a weird, sad life where you're so invested into improving your health. I think it's a weird, sad life where you, when you're so invested in destroying your health with alcohol and late nights and, and shit food. So I this is the happiest and healthiest I've ever been, right? And, and so I'm naturally spending like my full time, like I don't have a job, right? This is, my job is literally to be on self-improvement, to learn these things, to use them and make progress. And then to just teach you what works in a way that you understand. It's kind of a nice job to have, isn't it? Very quick plug. Let me just plug something, right? If you're interested in that business model where I'm on self-improvement full time, I just improve my life, learn what really works and then teach you what works. This exact business model is what I teach inside of Adonis School. It's the top link in the description. Sorry for the plug, but it's just for any entrepreneurs out there. I, I, this is a fantastic, beautiful business model. Think about for the last few years, my full time job has to been on has been to be on self-improvement. That means that I can go out there and really like investigate the things that improve your testosterone, like the ones that really, really help. 
and I can come to you, like, and not not just testosterone, but you know, every area of life, and then come to you with like a distilled, synthesized plan that you can just take. I've spent, you know, hours and hours, tens of hours on this topic, maybe close to a hundred hours on the topic of testosterone and sperm and, uh, you know, your diet for testosterone, your exercise for testosterone, the mindset, all these things, and I can put it into like a two hour video for you. You know, I, I track my sleep and everything. This is the whoop band. Ah! <laughs> But one of the things is that since I'm quite extreme with this, I've been trying to get my family onto this and my mom has been the hardest person because she's a little bit stubborn when it comes to things like of cooking. So, you know, I'll mention something that she shouldn't be using anymore. Like she'll literally use like seed oils, like sunflower oil or anything for the eggs and stuff. And, you know, it'll be heated as well. And for me, obviously we use like the normal the healthy full fat butter. And she's always been a bit harder to convert into like the recent, you know, like, the health things that I'm learning. Apart from recently, and there was this one moment when she's making my, my eggs and she already knows, like, so she makes my like my six eggs or eight eggs every single day for me. I have eight eggs a day, by the way. We'll explain why that's like literally such an easy testosterone hack soon. But she makes my eight eggs, uses the full fat butter. She knows exactly which one to buy because even some of the full fat butters still have rapeseed oil and all this other bullshit in. So she knows exactly the one that I eat and she'll particularly go and buy that for me. And I had to just say to her like, you care about your health, don't you? And she almost looks a little bit guilty, but she goes like, yeah, like, you know, I, I watch those like doctor shows on, on TV and stuff. <laughs> I was like, then, then why don't you start to eat more like me? You want to improve your health, don't you? And, and then straight away, she's like, for the first time ever, she starts getting enthusiastic and she was like, yeah, like we shouldn't be eating these other things. And she points towards like the oils that she usually cooks food in seed oils and all this other just like dirty shit which you know like it's just what like chances are your parents probably use the exact same thing because they've been fed the lie that they should use plant oil it's kind of like a plant butter in the uk we have this scam company which is called like flora or some shit it's like i can't believe it's not butter or some bullshit like that where it's literally just made with like seed oils but it looks like it's butter but it's not because it's just made with fucking like oils that are actually bad for you and i start to tell her that and it's this one question that changes it all you know, she, we're, we're talking about the modern day where, like, you know, um, fat doctors are telling you not to eat butter and everything. Fucking fat doctors. And I just say to her, like, were your parents healthy? And she goes, yes. You know, my, my, my father, even when he was really, really old, he used to walk around like this. You know, she, she's, like, imitating him. He used to walk around like this. Like, you know, he was, like, healthy. He had good posture and everything. And my mother and everything. And both of them have, have passed away. And I said, well... What did they eat? Did they use that? And I'm pointing to like this plastic carton of, of sunflower oil. No, no, they, they used ghee. They used like the real natural stuff. Ghee is like, you can almost say it's like an Asian, like South Asian butter, ghee. All the brown people watching this are like, oh, I'm sending ghee care, oh, la, la. <laughs> Ghee is like a brown person butter. In the UK, you have, in white, cold, one, white countries, you have butter. In brown countries, we have ghee. It's kind of, like, you can say it's kind of similar. You use it for the same things. And she was like, no, no, no. Like, they, they, they'd use ghee. The, this, this oil stuff wasn't around back then. You wouldn't really cook with oils that, those days. And then she just started thinking to herself. And she was like, she almost smiled. And she went, oh, yes, I'll, I'll use ghee. Like, she's probably just remembering, like, how her father was, like, really healthy. And it, it really made me happy to see that. And then I started to tell them even more, like, you know, my family know how serious I'm getting. They genuinely know that I don't touch my, touch plastics. My sister takes the piss because she'll grab something with me, and oh, plastic, plastic, fuck off. But even like my mom started to buy a bunch of like glass Tupperware, and, you, know, um, you know, glass containers or something so we can put stuff in. And when she'll buy something, which, you know, she's in the habit of buying this, this thing, like, you know, Greek yogurt, but it's in like a plastic casing. When I mention it, she'll literally look a little bit guilty and she'll be like, oh yeah. Oh, next time I'll go and see if they've got like, I think there's, there's a glass one they've got. Actually, I'll go and get that one next time. So I know that the, that was like a little bit of just an off tangent, but there's so many lessons we can pick out with that one conversation I had with my mother. First and foremost, honestly, what's more important than all this, which is a really wholesome message that I'm really proud to pass on to you is we're making huge progress in our lives by being on self-improvement and like not to sound like like boastful 
but you're really getting like good education here on my channel, on every other channel that you watch, which is to do with, you know, self-improvement. Your parents probably aren't getting this kind of education. Your parents have probably gotten the old, like, you know, like the matrix education that fat in, in your diet is bad for them, that they should eat low fat diet, which naturally means they should eat higher sugar, that, you know, the fat doctors is con convincing them that they've got like too high cholesterol and all this stuff. So your parents probably aren't being blessed by self-improvement advice. You know, your, your parents are probably not watching my videos, right? Maybe it could be a part of your responsibility to, to be a, like a little bit of a leader and to pass on some of the things that you're learning onto them. To just mention how much you care about your health and you want them to improve their health. And you know, you can just ask them the same question. Do you care about your health? Do you want to improve it? And your parents would probably say like, yes, yes, yes. And so you, the way that I do it, which is kind of manipulative, but I kind of like slightly lie to my mom, like kind of. And I always say to like, you know, the, the kind of manipulative words, I say like, and you know, every doctor online is saying this these days, that yeah, fat's actually healthy for us. And all the doctors online are saying that plastics are really bad and we should use glass. And she's like looking proper serious. She's like, all the doctors are saying, like, there's like one doctor who's based online who's saying it, but I'm like, yeah, all the doctors are saying that we shouldn't use plastics anymore. And she, my mom was like, oh, God, all the doctors are saying that. Okay, okay, okay. Like, <laughs> Because if I just say like, oh yeah, well, you know, like, here's my advice. I'm a guy in a bathrobe, but your son is in a bathrobe. She's not going to believe me, is she? So you can use that to just help your parents. That was a quick side note. If you want to help your parents, as an actionable step. Which honestly, I really do think you should at least try to like, to save one person from the modern day. As an actionable step, you can just use manipulation to help them. Which is, you know, it sounds kind of weird, but it, I really do think it's for the, the greater good. For parents, especially when you say something like, all the doctors are saying this online. Every doctor is saying this online. You'll, you'll literally be twice as likely to convince your parents and to convert them into following the way of Adonis. And soon they'll be like watching my videos on the big screen. But... The issue really is that our modern food has been made to be addictive. They've put so much extra shit inside of our food that now it's like it's triggering our caveman brain and, and you know, like our ancestral gut that we've become addicted to this. That's the problem is, you know, an easy way that a question that I asked my mom is, what if you just ate things that you knew your grandmother ate? And for you, imagine that, like, maybe you don't know your grandmother, your great-grandmother, but imagine that. What if you just ate the things that your great-grandparents ate? Not your parents, not their parents, but their parents. Probably, you probably never met them. They were probably around in, like, the early 1900s. What if you ate things that they ate? Do you think they're putting artificial sweetener in their coffee every morning, little, in the little fucking plastic, or the stevia? Do you think they're putting, like, that shit in their in their coffees and teas every morning? Do you think they're using seed oils? Do you think they're having high processed food that comes in a cute little box package with like a little picture of a cartoon character? You know, I just got a memory like, he is a piece of shit. This random f fitness YouTuber, he's probably a nobody, but I just, I don't know who he is. Maybe he is like a big person, but he's a guy who's really addicted to like this one particular sweet, um, I don't know what it is, but he ended up making like a video which was going against healthy diet advice and he started like spouting the same fucking bullshit of like, if it fits your macros, you can eat whatever you want as long as you get the protein in. And he's eating like the um, candy fish, like these sour sweets for his carbs because if it fits your macros and he was like actively arguing against people who were saying that you should eat healthy instead. This is the, the scope that we're in. You've got modern influencers, fucking fitness YouTubers who are telling you that you can eat whatever you want as long as you get the protein in. And the thing is, they're slightly true because you can still make muscle that way but building muscle whilst destroying your health is idiotic now if you want to be a professional bodybuilder or weightlifter powerlifter and that is your absolute one and only goal that is your purpose your mission in life do what it takes i actually support kind of hurting your health for your mission because your mission in, in a weird way is almost a priority above your health. Like for example, if you want to be a power lifter, you have to take the L with a bit of your health with like, you know, the weights that you have to get up to and everything, right? If that is like your mission in life. But if you're kind of like me and you're kind of like a guy who loves the gym, but it's supposed to supplement your life and make your life better. Like that's the point. That's the reason why I go to the gym is because it makes my life better. My life isn't the gym. 
my life is here and the gym makes my life better because it makes me feel good, it makes me look good, it makes me like, you know, I've built like a nice sexy physique that's given me confidence and attraction. And so I want what I'm getting from the gym to supplement my life. And yet these days you've got this distraction from all these motherfuckers online that are only looking at the thing in like in binary. You see all these fitness YouTubers you see online, including Alex Amosi's fitness advice. It's down here in terms of their level of ambition. These are like, they lack ambition, which I know sounds weird, but look, they lack ambition because here they are saying, okay, you can eat this shit food, but you can still gain muscle. This is where it is. The higher ambition level is to, to think to yourself, you can gain muscle and also improve your health at the same time. And the most highest level is that you can gain muscle, improve your health, and also eat things that are still tasty. As soon as you get this, this like big dick ambition level, you want to be up here? Why would you stay down here of like, yeah, you know, you could still make muscle if you eat some McDonald's. Sure. Okay, you could. If you eat junk food, you can still build muscle. Yes. Okay, I know this. But how about you find the food that's actually perfect for your body and it tastes delicious and you genuinely start to crave it. You get like a little bit of addiction to the healthy food. That's up here, right? That's like the ultimate level of ambition that we want to get to, right? Well, I'm there and I will teach you how to get here. Step one, unsubscri unsubscribe to every fitness YouTuber that you follow because most of them are horrible. Most of them are trash. The, especially if you've ever seen this fitness YouTuber do a 10,000 calorie challenge. This is the state of modern health these days, modern diets. It's like these guys who are supposed to be the pinnacle of health are doing 10,000 calorie challenge whilst like, like, like orgasming over the Krispy Kreme donut that they're eating and they've got the whole 24 pack or some shit. This is the state. These are the influencers. Influence. That it's like an Americanized standard these days. I want to see some fitness YouTubers who come on who are genuine real athletes who literally track every macronutrient but not because it's you know oh the candy fish I can have 72 grams of this little sour sweet but like literally they know what their body truly needs not just macros that's fucking like that's brain dead level single digit IQ is talking about just protein. Let's talk about every nutrient that your body needs. I'm talking about every single one. Then you can start calling yourself like an athlete. I think that's really like the, the next level of fitness YouTubers are going to be the ones who bring back like pure health and discipline back to the industry. Because right now, fitness YouTube, like fitness YouTube is, is like is like finance YouTube. They're just a joke. It's just a joke. No one who's watching that content is actually like really benefiting. It's just mindless mental masturbation. And because we don't eat like our ancestors and, and these days we just eat like these mo weak modern people, we're left with this digestive system, our gut, our brain, which is so ineffective at what it's supposed to do. When you're eating all this junk food, the Krispy Kreme donuts and pizza and, oh, but you know, like pizza, like why is it bad? Because the macros are pretty good and pasta, but the macros are pretty good. It's not about the macros. When you're eating food that's bad for you, of course, it's gonna start to decrease not only your testosterone, but so many different like metrics and, and even like your, your cognition, your brain's health, your ability to think straight and make good decisions. That's how you make money these days, is having a good equipped brain. So you wanna know the easiest diet that you can get onto? It's just a simple question. What did my ancestors eat? Eat like your ancestors. The best diet I've ever got on is the one that I'm on now, where I literally eat like my ancestors. I eat a lot of meat, a lot of eggs, a fair amount of vegetables, a little bit of fruit, nuts, Greek yogurt. That's it. Obviously, I put stuff inside of this. So with the Greek yogurt, I'll have... Almond butter, which, okay, sure, my ancestors didn't have that, but it's, it's 
100% almonds, so it's fair enough. I'll have almond butter with that. I'll have some organic protein powder, which isn't flavored. Flavored protein powder is a fucking cope. Go and look at the ingredients. Go and look at the ingredients. When you see a protein bar or, or a, a protein shake, like a protein powder, and it's got this like, oh, you know, like vanilla flavor, a chocolate, go and look at the ingredients, bro. It's got no sugar in it, right? It's got no sugar. When you see a protein bar and it says one gram of sugar or, or protein powder, one gram of sugar. So how does it taste sweet then? Look at the ingredients and see the cancer that they're putting in there. My protein powder has one ingredient. Organic whey. It's literally just one, it, like genuinely one ingredient. Go and find one protein powder which has one ingredient. I guarantee if you go and find the exact one, you could do this as an actionable step. If you take protein powder, go and find the exact one that you take with the flavor that you take. Look at the ingredient list. Protein powder mostly is a cope it will still fuck your insulin levels because they've just put artificial sweeteners that act in the same way or even worse as sugar would, but they don't have to say to you that it's sugar and you're stupid enough to believe it. You're having this sweet drink that tastes like, like blueberry crush or like salted caramel and you're literally there thinking, yep, but it's got no sugar. Well, how do you think it got sweet? Use your brain, stop looking at their marketing and use your brain. If it tastes sweet, if it's marketed as this like blueberry crush flavor pre-workout or protein powder, like these things have got disgusting, like cancerous chemicals in inside. They're literally made in a lab, not even just a farm, in a lab. And they've put chemicals in there that literally will still harm your body. But when, you, when you've got a single digit IQ like you've had for most of your life, you'll just be thinking, yep, well, it's got no sugar and it's got high protein. Think bigger. You're better than that now. You've gotten past that level of being like prone to their marketing, even off fitness companies. Even fitness companies, my protein, bulk powders, fucking, you know, Huel's fucking cope, right? Huel, I drank for ages. Look at the ingredients. Cope. All of these things, cope. Protein bars, cope. Did your great grandfather eat protein bars? No. He finished his work in the factory. He walked home to his beautiful feminine wife, to his seven children, and there was a steak on the table cooked with full fat butter. That's how he didn't have low testosterone like you. So now you might get a little bit upset that I'm telling you to give up your little blueberry protein powder, your salted caramel, and trust me, I like salted caramel protein powder. That was the only flavor that I would have. You might get a little bit upset, but you clicked on this video because you wanted to maximize your testosterone with your diet. You first, it's not about adding some nice things in. You know, it, like the best diet advice, no, no, sorry. The diet advice that people think is the best the ones that I always get the most positive comments from, because most people are pussies, is when I specifically say, you know, the best diet is not about removing things, it's just about adding healthy things in, so why don't you just have like a nice healthy thing, you know, added into your diet? That's bullshit. You know the best way for you to improve your health and testosterone with your diet? It's not to just add something healthy in, it's to take out the thing that's destroying your health first, that you're currently addicted to, that you've been so manipulated by their marketing, that even though it would be good for you to follow this advice, you're going to argue for that company instead of for your own health. I'm telling you something that will improve your health to get unflavored protein powder, the specific kind that I've got, which is one ingredient, and you're thinking to yourself like, oh, but it wouldn't taste as good as my salted caramel protein powder, but I've got to have some pre-workout. Who cares if it's got some sucralose or some stevia or some other bullshit chemicals that they've put in there? Oh, but I've got to have some protein bars every now and then. Who cares if it's wrapped in plastics and it's only got one gram of sugar, Hamza? Look at the ingredient list. You know, one of the easiest ways for you, not easier, sorry, a simple way, like a, you know, a simple step-by-step -step process for you. Eat food, which is one ingredient. Eat one ingredient food. That's it. Just one ingredient. Go and look at how many ingredients are inside of your pre-workout, your protein powder, this little pre-packaged little, you know, this bar of like fucking fiber bar. It's got like, oh, four grams of fiber. Look at the ingredients in there. It's disgusting. It's got fiber. It's got protein. These things are useless if your body's literally getting harmed by the things that you eat. And trust me when I say not just your body and your testosterone, your brain. Please trust me, even though this sounds offensive, 
you are a lot stupider than you should be. Like you should be a lot smarter than you actually are. Imagine how much that would change your life if your brain was literally just 20% sharper. Imagine that would genuinely be worth over your life, genuinely over a million dollars, right? If your brain was 20% better, because it's not just, you know, linear that, okay, you'd get 20% more results. If your brain was 20% better, you'd get compounding more results because suddenly you'd be even like an, an exponential amount of your competition in everything, right? In your grades, in everything. It's not just that your grades would go up by 20% because if your brain was better by 20%, if you imagine like the, the bell curve of intelligence, you would genuinely not just get 20% higher grades. You'd probably get like a fucking 60% higher, like double as good. You'd, you'd suddenly get to like the student who's genuinely getting A's or whatever the, the metric is for grades these days. I think it's like 10 or whatever. Or in your business, suddenly you'd, you'd beat so much more of your competition. You wouldn't just make 20% more money. You'd make like 300% more if your brain was more like better, right? You understand that, right? Eating these processed foods that these companies have genuinely made in labs it harms your brain because your br your gut your your gut and your brain are connected together so when you eat your gut sends it's very complicated and i i certainly don't know like enough about this to teach you that's why i'll just go over this very quickly but it's kind of like your gut is like a second brain inside of your body and it really is affected by the things that you eat to the point that if you eat something which is not good for you it will genuinely because of its connection to the brain it will genuinely like make your brain worse this is why there's certain things you can eat that will make your brain better. Blueberries are a, are a great example of that. Why would you sacrifice not just your health, your testosterone, and also your brain power, and therefore money, to eat these things that are kind of nice? Because you know how self-improvement works by now. You know that the first few weeks of getting into the habit of something is kind of difficult. But then after that, it kind of gets naturalized, right? So let's, with the gym, the first few gym workouts, when you imagine, imagine literally the moment before you ever went to the gym, it was kind of this daunting experience. Like the, imagine the first workout, it like, it's a daunting experience of like what to do. Are you gonna be laughed at? You know, all these like mental like things you've got to think through. Now it's just like, okay, well, what am I going to wear? Which workout is it? Okay, sweet. You know where the machines are. You know how to safely do the exercises, right? It's the same thing transitioning into eating clean. It seems so like scary and so, so sad to switch over from like, let's say the salted caramel protein powder to like the organic one ingredient one, which doesn't really have a taste, right? It seems kind of sad, but then now it's like, it's just like me going to the gym. It's like, I'll have that protein shake and it's like, yeah. It's the one that I have every single day. I know how to make it. Yeah, yeah. I actually kind of like the taste now. You'll adjust to it over time, just like you have with every other self-improvement habit you got into. And then you're like, if you imagine yourself as that top tier, like young athlete, healthy guy, who's genuinely literally not even having flavored protein powder because even that's too unhealthy for you. That is like, that's a fucking beautiful level, bro. That's a really good level to get to. And I've even wrote here, like, even us guys on self-improvement cope. I want to tell you a story, you know. There's something that you need to know as a guy on self-improvement. This is not for 99% of the world. But this is specifically for you if you've been watching my videos, if you've benefited from this. We specifically need to explain something to you, like, the nature, the concept of still improving your life. Everything is relative to where you currently are. What I mean by this is... Let me just tell you the story actually. So my girl's over on Sunday just a few days ago and we, I'm, I'm doing this new like protocol. I'll explain it soon, but it's like optimum for health and everything. I don't even eat till, I don't eat past um, 12 o'clock. So I literally finished like dinner, like my last meal at midday, like before 1 p.m. And I have 10 hours of fasting after that. So it's like really good for sleep and everything. And it gets to like that time and, and I'm down by a thousand calories. I wasn't able to get it in and we start coping and everything with me and my girl. We're absolutely starving. We have a few berries like after that time. So I'm kind of like slightly cheating on the diet and literally the way we were eating the berries, we were literally like not even present. I, I even laughed at her because she was like, like this. And I was like, you did not taste a single one of those. You weren't present at all. She was just like this. I mindlessly eating them because we were both starving, right? It's, it's 1 PM. We finished our calorie, like, 
like our meals for the day we can't eat again but we've got a thousand calories still left so we're literally so fucking hungry and we, we've got the thousand calories left just because we didn't get to like eat everything in time i had to go to the gym and everything right and, and then we start thinking like wait should we just take the l for today and just order like nando's and get chicken and you get um like a salad and some halloumi and you know have a chicken salad and everything and the clock starts ticking more and more and, and the decisions really weighing up thinking wait like we could just take the l and kind of cheat on the diet that we set today and we've got a reason to because we've got calories the point was not to eat past 12 o'clock so that's the like you know the, the discipline thing that i'd be breaking but we're so fucking hungry we've also got calories should we just do it and it's just decisions is weighing on me it gets like 5 p.m and i'm thinking man like I, I wanted to stop eating five hours ago if we order it now i would be kind of disappointed in myself and I end up, and you know, we start coping, and this is how you will cope, by the way, saying, oh, but you know, it's only a chicken salad, and we've got calories, like, you know, this is, imagine, like, this is our cheat day, having a chicken salad, right? And I said, you know what, I realized, it's all relative, me having this chicken salad five hours later, like, you know, past my eating window, is the same thing as a Jeffrey fat motherfucker eating his Doritos and going for out on, like, a night out and drinking alcohol. It's the same thing. If you have this one weekly thing where you say to yourself, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have a cheat day once a week and everything. It, you're no different to the version of you that was having the cheat day once a week by getting out, steaming drunk or having like the full on disgusting meal. It's all relative. If you want to make progress, you have to be the kind of person who doesn't have that like that off time, who thinks that it's not like, because you made progress when you stopped doing that that thing that you know you were doing wrong, right? That You know, that moment on, on your diet, for example, when you'd cope and say, oh, you know, just today, it, you know, I've had a pretty good week and everything. You're, you'll only make progress when you overcome that, no matter what level you're on. Does this make sense? Progressive overload. No, sorry. Sacrifice and effort and discipline must be progressively overloaded. At first, you had to stop being, like for some guys, you had to stop being a piece of shit going out drinking alcohol and taking drugs once a week. That was still messing you up for the entire week and you make progress when you stop that. But then eventually, it gets to the point where you literally have to not even have the chicken salad because it's too late past your eating window and it's all relative. Does this make sense? It was the same. I sat there and, and thought to myself, fuck, the way for me to make progress is the same kind of concept that I needed to make progress all those years ago where I needed to like not have that that night cheat meal. And it's the same thing, even though it seems so absurd that what I'm saying is like my cheat meal was a chicken salad that was like too late in my eating window. It's the same thing. If you want to make progress, it needs to be progressively overloaded to where you are right now, not what is like normal for other people. So if you think to yourself like, oh no, you know, I used to play so many video games. Now that I only play one hour a day, it's fine. No, because for you to make more progress, you have to even get rid of that one hour now. It's always this constant progress to getting rid of the bad stuff and increasing the good stuff, always. And if you're not currently doing that, if you're saying to yourself that it's fine if I have the one hour of video games a day or even one hour a week, it's fine if I have the cheat meal. If you say these things to yourself, you're still coping in the exact same way that you used to when you were a Jeffrey. Now, more cope will come out of most people. A lot of people watching this will start to say the exact same cope they would if they were fat, right? Oh no, but the, the, this is too much and this is too much of a sacrifice and I don't even want to. Like, you sound like a fat person. It's the exact same thing. Do you see my point here? It's the exact same thing. The way that you cope right now that you're saying like, oh, but it's not so bad if I just play one hour at the end of the day is the same way you used to cope by saying, oh, but it's not so bad if I just play six hours a day. It's the same kind of cope for you to make progress. You have to destroy this cope. Stop this ego mentality of thinking, oh, but I've made so much progress and I'm so much better than everyone else. So I can kind of relax here. No, if you want to make more progress, stop coping no matter what level you're on. If you don't want to make more progress, get the fuck off my channel. Seriously, go and watch Rick and Morty. Like one, one guy who's watched this part of the video will actually shame himself and his bloodline and click off thinking, yep, I actually don't want to make more progress. I'm content with life. But all of my boys are here. Every, one, every fucking young man who's disciplined, who wants something bigger, who wants to retire his family, who wants to feel physically and mentally strong, he's going to keep watching thinking, you know what? Hamza is right. Progressive sacrifice must be progressively overloaded, no matter what level you're on. And so if your diet seems pretty good right now, 
but there's improvements you could make and you've been coping from them, know that the only way you'll make progress is not by saying, oh, but you know, my diet's so good compared to what it was like. No, no, no. You need to keep making progress. You can't stop here. Just remember me with that chicken salad debate. That was like my night of drinking. Four years ago, it was genuinely me drinking like a liter of vodka, taking honestly like half a gram of MDMA, like taking a lot of fucking drugs. That was like my night, like, um, you know, my night off thinking, oh yeah, whatever. My night off now is a chicken salad, but it's the same thing. If you want to make progress, you can't have the evening chicken salad that's past your, your eating window. Even though it sounds so silly to say that because the chicken salad is still healthy, it's not the point. If my goal was, like, you know, the, what I wanted to make progress on was to eat, finish eating early, then I need to stick to that. Discipline would be me not having that cheat meal. No matter how much all the fatties around the world would think that it was crazy and, and think that, well, a chicken salad is not healthy. It's not the point. I had a goal, I had standards up here. This is what you need to bring into your mind. You need to continuously keep sacrificing more of like the normal unhealthy world. And I know that it can seem a little bit sad to do that because we do find pleasure in those things. If you can just blindly put your trust in me, the once you cross this chasm, like, you know, you, you, you go through this tunnel, the light at the end of this tunnel of self-improvement is, is so much brighter. I'm certainly not at the, you know, the golden, like, you know, the end point or anything like that. But what I'm just saying is it can seem sad to give up your vices from your normal life, but your life genuinely becomes so much better to the point that you'll never go back. I couldn't imagine a normal life anymore, even though I was so saddened by giving up a lot of those things. Because the life I live now to a lot of people can seem kind of sad. I just wake up and I work and improve myself all day. I love it. This is the happiest, healthiest I've ever been. You know, I, I got a compliment from one guy who, he was inside of a Donna school. Oh, quick plug, no, it's not even a plug. He was inside of a Donna school, we went for a hike. And he's become like a friend of mine now. And, and you know, I speak to him quite often. Uh, his name's Stuart. He's got like a little small YouTube channel he's growing as well. And he gave me a really good compliment, which I, you know, usually when someone compliments me, like, no offense to you, but when someone says, like, oh, Hamza, you changed my life and everything. Honestly, it does nothing to me anymore. So mostly like comment compliments just don't feel, because I get so many. I, I don't mean to sound like a dickhead, but once you get so many, you know, imagine the girl who gets called beautiful all of her life. Soon when the, when the next guy calls her beautiful and she's heard it 10,000 times, it's like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I know that I've changed people's lives. I know, yeah. So most compliments don't really do anything for me, but he gave me a really good one. He ended up like kind of micro telling the story of meeting me for the hike and we go for a hike. And he said like, oh yeah. And I was just looking at Hamza and look, like looking at his skin and his beard and stuff and just thinking like, this looks like a healthy guy. I can tell that he's been doing the right things. That, that warmed my heart, honestly. That was like one of the best compliments I've got in, in the last while. That this guy just like, he, he's become a friend of mine by the time we just met for the first time. We go for a hike with a bunch of other people. And he literally said like, I looked like I was healthy because that's what the stuff that I've been working on recently. And you can go look at this, bro. If you do want to, like, if you scroll all the way down my YouTube channel, maybe near the start, you can see the difference of how my face looks now compared to like what it used to a few years ago. And, and you know what? You can even do this with just maybe about seven, eight months ago. So right now I'm recording this just in case anyone's watching in the future, halfway through 2023 in, um, in June, 2023. If you go and look at what I used to look like in December, 2022, when I was in Dubai and I was kind of like sickly there, you can see the difference. Not only was my hair and my beard clapped, but like I looked kind of like sickly. Now I feel like this is the healthiest I've been. I've sacrificed a little bit of like a, a certain social life for this, but I'm healthier and happier, more productive, more successful. I make a fuck ton more money this way because my brain's actually better. What have I really lost? I've lost drinking with my friends. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun, but I'm just gonna, you know, like, oh, I'm so sad that my friends are drinking and smoking cigars and I'm not there. I'll wipe that, away, you know, my tears away with the fact that I'm making right now over 3 million a year. Oh yeah, yeah, you, got, you guys have a fun night, guys. Oh, <laughs> oh, I can't eat the cake, guys. You know, just get, get me my, my 300K per month. Oh. Now, I'm not even a materialistic person. I'll wear a bathrobe, I still have the exact same watch 
and I don't even put this on for videos. I genuinely don't take this watch off. But I mean, making a fuck ton of money is kind of nice, right? And I'm telling you right now, a big part, if you can believe me, bro, a big part of the reason of my recent success of like really monetizing my channel well and making a fuck ton of money, I promise you it's actually my diet. When you have the right diet, it makes your brain so much better that suddenly it's like, it, I can't even explain it to you because you'd need to feel it unless you've had that moment before. It's kind of like, you know, when you wake up, your brain's probably the best. Like, you know, you, you're fasted at that moment. It's kind of like that, but 24 seven. And now my morning fasted level is on the next level after this. I'm thinking through like some great decisions. The way that I'm speaking seems to be, be even better. I'm just happier, healthier, everything. All because I improved my diet away from like what normal people do. And one final point, healthy food is still problematic. This is where it gets a bit annoying. I'll be done with my like stupid ass like rant. Sorry, I've just wasted so much time, but I wanted to bring these arguments of like, you know, just how, what I see the, the modern world's problem is. Healthy food is still problematic because you can go and get healthy food, vegetables and meat, right? Vegetables have got pesticides on them. Meat's got hormones stuffed inside of it. They're both wrapped in plastics. So even if you go and eat the right things, it's still a bit of a maze because there's still, it's, it's hard to win this game because even if you choose the right foods, there's still problems with it. And you might be thinking at this point, because there's a comment that I get quite often and it's like, oh, but this is just too much work. I'd rather just live like a normal life and I'd rather just enjoy myself. This is too much work. I'd rather just go on, for example, if it fits your macros and just get my protein in. What I'd say to that is, remember, you're doing this for testosterone. You're doing this for your health. You're doing this for your brain to make more money and you'll feel better. It feels like a lot of work to take in what I'm saying because I'm literally saying, okay, don't live like a normal person anymore. You kind of have stopped doing that anyway. This is why you can't even relate to your old friends anymore. And this is why like you've noticed that since you followed my advice, your life's getting better, but you are getting like weirder. You're able to relate to your parents and your friends less and everything. This is the experience of so many guys who follow my advice, which, you know, I wish it didn't happen. I wish you ultimately became so much more popular if you followed my advice, but it's kind of like, it's, you've got to choose one. You can be the popular guy who's usually destroying his health, or you can be the guy who's, who ends up getting onto self-improvement and really improving his health, but then normal people don't really find you normal anymore because you're not. And then obviously the cure to this is to become popular amongst the self-improvement guys, like what you've seen with me. If you imagine like in a weird way, my business here has made me like a super popular guy amongst the, the people that I can actually relate to. So imagine what I've done here in a weird way. I have cured the problem of self-improvement loneliness by becoming like the face of self-improvements on, on YouTube or, you know, like a, a face of self-improvements. This is a, a comment, a quick plug as well, by the way, if you're feeling really lonely on self-improvement and you want to be an entrepreneur, but no, none of your friends understand all your friends are going to go to like normal shitty jobs. Your parents want you to get to, into university, but you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to meet friends like that and also get closer to me. Adonis School is where we offer literally all of that. I apologize for doing like little quick plugs like that, but when it's relevant, because of the fact that I am like a proud entrepreneur, I do want to mention my service, like the only thing I sell is Adonis School, when it's relevant and I do genuinely really think it's a, it's a, honestly, it's the best thing that I've made, even better than these YouTube videos because the amount of like progress and results that the guys, because it's like a private community and so guys come in and they've just not, you know, they've had to live this life where, for example, they can't even eat normal food anymore. They're like staying away from plastics. It's like, who are they going to relate to in their normal lives? And yet they come into this community of Adonis School and they start writing posts and everyone's like congratulating them. The, you know, a guy just posted a picture where he's gotten rid of most of his clothes and his parents were angry at him, but they were all polyester and everything. And this is the one place on the entire internet where Everyone was supporting him saying, oh, that's amazing. You got rid of it. Like, you know, where are you going to buy your new clothes from? It's, it's just nice to have a community of people who actually share the same values. If you're interested in that, it's Adonis School. Go click on that link right now. But let's move on. Let me actually walk you through the full on step by step process to actually make progress here. Now, what you may do to, to 
educate yourself. If right now you don't know much about diet, there's a video on my channel which could really help you. It's about 40 minutes long where I really, it's more like an education video where I go through like science and everything to explain what food does to you. And it's a video which you can just, I won't link it, I'll probably forget, but you can just search it on YouTube and just write on YouTube, Hamza, what fitness YouTubers never tell you. It's a 40 minute video where I talk about nutrition and it's some, it's probably a lesson you've never had. You could probably go and add that to like watch later and watch it after this video if you wanted. So what should you actually eat? We talked so much about the problems of, of the modern world and the disgusting diets and everything they're putting into these foods and everything and the, you know, how difficult this is. Well then what do you actually eat to improve your testosterone and also just your health and your longevity and everything else? Like what I said before, there's a few key items that I think are absolutely, you should add them into your daily routine. Number one, and my absolute favorite is eggs. Eat four eggs every single day for the rest of your life. Say that with me. Eat four eggs every single day for the rest of your life. Say it one more time. Eat four eggs every single day for the rest of your life. Four eggs has been somewhat, like I don't know how accurate this is, but it's kind of like the amount, four eggs. It's kind of like the amount that will maximize the good cholesterol that you needed. Eggs are so easy to make. I don't know if you've ever made them, but literally all you need is get like a cast iron pan. Don't get the normal pan that your parents use. If it's got like this black kind of like look to it, like it looks like a modern, you know, pan that they put on the stove. It's probably got fucking cancer, pest, um, estrogenic Teflon. It, you don't want a non-stick pan. What you want is a pure stainless steel pan or a cast iron pan. You can buy them for like a few dollars on Amazon. If your parents have already got one, if it looks like it's pure stainless steel, it shouldn't be um, anti-stick or anything like that. It should like stick because it's literally just metal, right? That you're putting onto the stove or the cast iron one. What you do is you get full fat butter, butter that's got no other ingredients apart from just like the milk that it's made out of. The one that I specifically use is Law Pack and it specifically has to be the one that's in like a brick kind of tin foil packaging like this. If it's in a big plastic tubbing like this, not only is the plastic estrogenic, but then those ones usually have like bullshit se uh, seed oils. So for example, there's a Law Pack, the same company that I have who have done a tub and it's a spreadable one. My mum got me that one time thinking that, oh yeah, you know, it's spreadable, Hamza will like this. And straight away, I looked at the first word on the thing which said spreadable and I knew it was coke. Guess why? Guess why? Butter is fat, right? What fat do you know would be spreadable and soft? If you imagine the fat on your body, would that be spreadable? Think about the mass there. It wouldn't be spreadable, right? It would be kind of like a, this hard, kind of stodgy substance, right? If it's spreadable, what the fuck have they put in it? In it? And so I turn over this, this box and I, aha! Ribseed oil! I up the made testosterone go ruin it, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm not actually getting, I'm getting my mom, but I, I show it to my mom and it's just kind of like annoying because it's, I don't know, it, was, it might have been somewhat expensive, you know, a few pounds or something and I'm just not going to have it and she's not going to have it either. So it was just kind of wasted money. And I told her it specifically needs to be like the, like the law pack or whatever one it is, but it's in like the butter is in like this brick kind of shape like that. And you look at it, it, look at the ingredient list, it's full fat, none of this bullshit of low fat butter, um, plant butters or anything because all of that's got harmful chemicals and usually it's in plastic packaging. When you get this one, it's just in tin foil. And um, so you get that, literally just put some on the pan, like, I don't know, this this amount. Don't be scared of having butter, only like like little pussies think it's a bad for you. I think it's very good for you. I think all of our, like, not all of our ancestors, but I do think our great grandfathers who were coming home to having like a massive steak who had a handshake that would crush your hand, I believe they were all having a lot more butter than we were having. I don't believe the fat doctors who tell me that it's unhealthy. So I have like a fair generous amount, amount of it and then cook, literally just crack eggs directly into there and just move them around with like a, a wooden little spatula, make sure it's not a plastic one because estrogenic. Literally just move them around till it looks like it's good enough. It's literally no skill involved at all. Four eggs every single day. I personally find it better when I have eight. So when I have eight, this is like, um, should I tell you? Let's just say if my, my girl likes it when I have eight instead of four. There's a significant difference. When I have eight eggs a day, I promise you, I get so many like, like erections in the middle of the night. 
it genuinely reminds me from when I was a teenager. I'm 25 now, so that stuff kind of went down a little bit. I genuinely feel like I'm, I'm a 16 year old again when I have eight eggs a day with a good amount of butter. Now every guy's like, wait, what? what? Eight eggs, a day? we're full, full. So the, 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 the brick the butter like this happens. So yeah, literally, I'm not even taking the piss. Eight eggs is what, what really does it for me. And so my girl has this joke where she's like, oh yeah, let's go get you some eggs and everything. So you can just go and um, experiment with that. But I'd say at least have four up to eight and um, have that pretty much every single day. The second thing is steak. Now steak is quite like, you know, for some people they're just used to having steak. For me, it was always quite like this weird thing that I had never really considered having. It wasn't something that was ever like made in my household. And so the thought of going to a restaurant and ordering steak or even cooking it at home was always so weird for me. Slowly and, and, and like very slowly over time, I became caught more accustomed to it. So I remember being in Dubai, I lived there for a few months and I went with a bunch of like friends at the time. We went like Mike Thurston, if you know him, I invited him as well. And we went to this like really fancy steak restaurant on the Palm in Dubai, like, you know, this really expensive one and they bring it all out, like these fresh cuts and they cut you and everything. Honestly, it was delicious. And I was like, damn, I might have been missing out on this. And there was one particular one that I liked, like a cut. So when you get steak, it's it's based on like what cut of the cow it is because it tastes different. The one that I like is the rump. So rump steak, it, it's just kind of like, it's nice to eat. I, I don't know how to explain it, but like it, I like it compared to like the other styles. And I really liked it there. I ended up coming back and seeing that my gym that I go to, they serve it. And so for a quite a long time for like a solid month or so, I would go every single morning and get a steak and two eggs before my workout. And with no, nothing else, no sauce, no greens or anything like that, literally just, I would even tell them, make it plain. Like I literally just want steak and two eggs. This is like my diet, by the way. I know it can seem like a little bit odd. Like for example, I'll go to the, the cafe, to the gym that I go to. And what I'll get is like, I specifically tell them like no greens, no sauce or anything. And it's not like, it's not, weird to do that it's just like you know the the waitress i'm telling okay uh, you know can i have this the steak please medium rare with two fried eggs and then uh, no greens on that please you know because they'll put like fucking edamame beans which are estrogenic or some shit or they'll put like barbecue sauce or whatever the fuck like other brown sauce or whatever it is and i tell them all that and they're just like oh okay okay no greens or this they're not like looking at you thinking like oh oh like you're you based bro like they're not, they're not looking at you weird so i got into this and i've got to the point now where like i actually really enjoy it but there was always, you know, when I'd have steak, I'd always cut off like the fatty bits. I always just, just because, like, you know, I've, I've grown up with like quite a fucking childish palate that like, if there's anything a bit weird in my mouth, I, you know, I won't eat it. A lot of guys are like this because you haven't actually had real food. You know, if you're somewhat of a fussy eater, if you won't eat anything that's got a bit of like grizzly bits, that's because you haven't actually had real food. Think about it. That's because you've had your, your mouth, your, your palate, your taste buds have genuinely been manipulated by the modern world. And now you'll only eat things that are like kind of like, how would you explain it? Like ultra clean shaped in the sense that like you'll eat a chicken nugget because it's a very clean consistency because it was made in a lab. But you won't eat like a real cut of meat because it's got like a little bit of like this grizzly bit here, a bit of fat here and stuff. And you won't eat that. What do you think your caveman ancestors were eating? What do you think your your great grandfather, the one with the handshake that would fucking crush your hand? What do you think he was eating? Was he just like, oh no, dear, I don't like the the fatty bits of the steak, right? I thought this once when I was eating this. I'm eat, I'm in the gym eating this steak, and you know I'm eating around the fatty bit, and I'm just thinking to myself like, why the fuck am I not eating that? Because you know what, my ancestors would have ate that fatty bit, and I guarantee that's where their strength would have come from eating the fat of an animal that's got to be super fucking healthy really like use your brain to think about it imagine in our survival mode caveman ancestors that's the part that would have been like so beautiful to eat probably tastes even better but it's just got like a different kind of texture than my childish palate that's been conditioned from chicken nuggets and you know clean mcdonald's fries that are all perfectly shaped has been sort of put off I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start eating it. So the way that I did it, instead of just eating like the fucking fat bit just by itself, I like, I cut it in line with a bit of the normal meat and I ate it, bro. It tasted delicious. I was like, what the fuck? Just because it was, it felt a bit weird in my mouth, but it made the taste so much better with like having the fat inside of it. I'm a clean plate guy now. When I have steak, I will eat all of like the fatty bit. Even if it's a bit like grizzly and stuff, I'll munch it like a caveman would. 
I guarantee this is where my recent like strength and like like horniness has, has come from. Is that I'm just eating like the full fat cuts of the meat. No problem. So if you're somewhat of like a picky eater, I don't blame you because I was as well, but I guarantee you weren't naturally supposed to be like that. If you imagine if you had just grown up 10,000 years ago, would you still have been a picky eater? I highly doubt it. I guarantee your your brain and your taste buds have been conditioned by the modern day because everything's made so perfect because it's made in a lab, right? Everything's made so perfect. So you're, you've grown up on having fucking like, um, What's that fucking cereal called? Like Cocoa Pops and everything where each one has been made in a lab to be perfect. So now when there's like a bit of meat, like for example, which is a, a little bit more grisly and a little bit inconsistent, that really triggers you. Get into the habit of having like the full fat cuts of meat, how our ancestors would eat. Steak is fantastic for this. There's a, a passage from the four hour body by Tim Ferriss, where he explains how he increased his testosterone. And he, he says he had steak three times a day, by the way. So, and you know, someone can say, oh, but red meat's really bad. I don't, I don't give a fuck, bro. Shut Fat doctor said it, I don't believe him, whatever. I feel better when I eat it. Soon I'll have another blood test and we'll see like my, my results. If it seems healthy, okay, I'll go with it. If not, I'll make some adjustments. I don't care what any like, doctor who I haven't verified, who isn't in the public eye, who hasn't been scrutinized by millions of people. I don't care what some hidden fat doctor or, or your government says about red meat. Seems to be nice for me. Number three, nuts. Simple, just order some nuts. You buy them and they're always in plastic packaging, which is a bit annoying. And so you're getting some kind of estrogenic shit, you know, cause it's like touching all the plastics and stuff. The company I buy them from doesn't have any plastics touching them at all. That's the company called Peace With The Wild. I've got a link in the description, which is to the, um, to the, the toothpaste, whatever it is. If you just go look at like the bottom part of my description, I've, I've linked their site. You can just click, click on that link cause it's an affiliate link. So I make money from this as well. And then on their site, you can look for like snacks, click on nuts and you can order like the exact like nuts that you want and it'll deliver to your house. I think it might be UK only, but you can have a look and it doesn't, it comes in like paper packaging instead. So that's where I get them from. And full fat butter is what we spoke about. So I'm going to walk you through now the four levels that you can go through to, um, to buy your food. So nice and simple, the four levels. And I want to see where you are right now and what level you want to set as a goal to get to, let's say by the end of this year, level one, you shop at a normal, wait, let me, Level one, you shop at a normal supermarket. Everything's wrapped in plastics and everything has pesticides or hormones. This is just level one. You just shop normally. Level two, you buy organic stuff in a normal supermarket. So it doesn't have like pesticides or hormones or weird shit in it, but it's still wrapped in plastic because it's in a normal supermarket. Level three, you buy from a big farm shop that connects like other farm shops and these are all organic and these are organic, but they still touch plastics and they might have some kind of extra hormones and stuff here and there. So level three is like a good level. This is where I'm at. It's where you'll shop online or whatever it is at farm shops directly from farms and you'll be able to buy their stuff, but it can still come wrapped in plastics, but you can kind of choose like the organic sustainable farm. And you can literally look at like which farms you're buying foods from, by the way. So obviously if you live in like a country that doesn't have like farms, which you can do this, Fair enough, but like in the UK, we've got a lot of farms. You can literally just like buy from farms and what you do, I'll explain which exact website I use. You can use websites which kind of connect farms together. So you, you don't actually contact like, you know, the farm, the specific farm with the farmer there or something. It's more that there's a website that has links to those farms and it'll bring it in and they'll literally write details. But number four, Number four is that the highest level you can get to, you contact a farmer directly and you organize a deal with them where you'll, you'll, pay, you'll pay them extra if they follow like a procedure where they don't use hormones or anything like that. And they also don't let your food touch plastic at all on its journey to you. That's level four, that's an extreme level. 99.9999% of people will never ever get there. I will eventually. Right now I'm on level three. So level three, let me explain that because I think this is where you should get to. First of all, where are you? Most likely you're on level one or you're at level zero. My parents buy my stuff and I've got no say in it whatsoever. So I'm sorry if that's you, bro. But most likely most people are like level zero, level one. 
You want to get to level three as fast as possible. You can jump there right now. Level three was you buy from like these websites that connect a bunch of farms together and they'll write real details of what that farm is like and they'll source stuff from farms which are actually like good for not just the environment but for example they'll know they'll write in the farm that this cow has been pasture fed which means that it's been grass fed for its entire life with no bullshit put into it that you know they'll say like these are chickens with hormone free and it'll literally say what what packaging the the food has touched as well so the one i, I shop at is called abel and cole i'll put a link in the description i believe it's only going to be for the uk but you can have a look anyway i'll put a link in the description i literally just shop at them it's nice and easy it's almost like an online grocery store but they're they're um connecting all these farms together so i literally buy like the steak blueberries almond butter greek style yogurt and everything a lot of the stuff there can still be wrapped in plastic but you can specifically look for the ones that aren't and even they give so much details which is so much better because what this means is you're skipping an entire process point of the supermarket you see the stuff is made at the farmers then it goes to the processing at the supermarket they process it you know they wrap it up and stuff and then they sell it if you can get it from the farmer that's one big step saved oh it's sorry like if you can get it from this kind of third party who connects the farmer to you that's one step saved if you can get it directly if you can get literally the farmer you know the farmer's assistant or whatever to knock on your door with your food that's another step save that's a huge level in the future so i don't know how to like teach you that just yet because i'm not there but this website i've just discovered i've used it it's abel and cole link in the description that's how i'm going to be ordering gro like my own groceries right now i specifically order steak I order Greek style yogurt that's in uh, glass containers. I order dark chocolate, which is 100% dark chocolate and it comes in like a papery um, kind of packaging and not plastic. And it's got like a healthy, um, you can like literally see which farm, which place has made them. And it gives you like a description of them, which is like, oh, you know, this is how they made this. So this is how their chickens are allowed to like, you know, their chickens are organic and, and they're in like a low density field, which means that this is like gonna be healthier meat or eggs for you. So that's like a good level for everyone to upgrade to. If you've got enough money for it, because things like this, cost more money and so right now a lot of people will be really upset because you need to be choosing the thing that's the cheapest and you're doing that whilst knowing it is hurting your health compared to like choosing like you know the ultimate step level three or level four and this is the reality this is why i love entrepreneurship so much because i think it's the escape from living a life where like you know that for example you know that cheap supermarket that you or your parents shop at you know that that's probably not healthy everything's wrapped in plastic it's probably got like low quality sourced meats and eggs and everything from like those horrible farms where they're putting like pesticides and all the horrible hormone shit that they're putting and yet you don't have the money to upgrade this is why i love entrepreneurship it's your escape away from this this is why I've become so proud of myself that this is how I spend my money. Literally, like I go and discover like the, the cleanest, healthiest place that I can order food from, for example. And that's like that brings joy to me. The same as like buying supplements or buying things that improve my health, like this sleep, this uh, tracker. This is why I'm a big advocate. You know, this video is for testosterone, but I'm a bit a big advocate for using your testosterone, your masculine competitiveness to make a fuck ton of money. And so I know I've mentioned it twice, but I, I want to end this video on one last like plug. Adonis School is where I teach entrepreneurship. I have shown you my journey. Like you've literally seen, if you've watched my videos for a while and you've known my story, you can scroll all the way down and see where I started. I started literally unemployed on government welfare and here i stand before you with a successful business and like and the freedom that i can go and like improve mine and my family's health from buying stuff like this entrepreneurship is beautiful that's what i teach inside of adonis school we've got multiple teachers in there we've got a sleep coach who's helping guys like improve their sleep so they can be more productive in their business and the idea behind it like we've got really good people working in there and the idea behind it is like, we just want to get you results in your business as fast as possible. I want you to join and within just a couple of months already be making like, like more money than you've made before. Thinking to yourself like this was an amazing investment. That's what I genuinely think. If I could mention it to younger Hamza, 
I, I would every single day because he was into entrepreneurship, but he just needed more support and direction. And it would have been nice to have a community of like-minded guys who were also into entrepreneurship because when everyone around you doesn't understand and your parents don't understand and your friends don't understand and your friends just want to be normal people and they don't understand like your pursuit for business, it's hard to, to stay as motivated for this. And so if you can afford it, Adonis School is what I would recommend. I genuinely do think it's really, really good work that we've done there. Also, that one video that I mentioned, you might be interested in that. You can watch that totally for free on YouTube. Just search on YouTube, Hamza, what fitness YouTubers never tell you. I'll maybe have it pop up as like a little card or something as well. Go and watch that right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.